Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. June 14th, Phil Robertson. Today, our story is about a man just like you and me. That is, if you grew up in a log cabin with no electricity or phone or toilet or bathtub, and you had four brothers and two sisters, and you grew up to be a reality television star. Phil Robertson says he came up in the 1950s, but it was more like the 1850s, and his family mostly lived off the land. Must have been some good land, because Robertson went on to be all-state in football, baseball, and track, and a football scholarship took him on to university. But when the pros tried to recruit him, Robertson turned them down because it would interfere with his hunting. For him, football was merely the vehicle to get his education. And he did. Robertson earned a bachelor's degree in physical education and a master's degree in education, which helped him support his family as a teacher. That is, until he hit a rough patch. That's where today's story comes in. By the way, on this day in 1991, Phil Robertson patented the duck call. Blessing your enemies is hard, but it leads to God-given joy. God used duck calls to change Phil Robertson's fortune. God used his word to change Phil's life. If you've ever seen the reality show on A&E called Duck Dynasty, you've probably seen Phil Robertson, the wise patriarch of the clan. With his long brown hair and his longer, not so brown beard, he looks like a penniless vagabond. But the duck call he invented made him and his family millionaires. Phil Robertson grew up in poverty and rebellion. He married Kay when he was 19, but marriage did not bring maturity. He drank too much, experimented with drugs, and had multiple affairs. When Kay told him she was going to leave him, Phil decided to straighten up and follow Jesus. Phil found a man who had once tried to introduce him to Jesus, but Phil had thrown him out of his house. This time, he asked the man to try again. Phil became a Christian and learned his first lesson. Love God, love man, and try to be good. I decided I would try that. I'd never tried before. Now, Phil was an Arkansas fisherman and a hunter. That was his livelihood and his passion. And he explained how life was. See, you got your rednecks and your river rats. River rats were poor men who broke the law instead of getting an honest job, and they bothered Phil. River rats, unlike rednecks, were good thieves and often stole Phil's fish. But Phil had studied Romans 12. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 14, 17, 19, and 21. Robertson thought about the river rats, the banes of his existence. That day when he went down to the lake where he had laid a net, he heard voices, so he hid in the bushes. It was the river rats, and they were stealing his fish again. They're stealing my fish, Lord. Do you want me to bless them? Phil thought of Romans 12, do not return evil for evil. Phil had caught these river rats with the fish before and usually roared at them and showed him his shotgun and threatened their lives. Like rats, they ran away. But this time Phil wanted to obey God and his word. I wanted to see if this would work, but it definitely made no earthly sense for sure. Phil approached the rats and took his guns with him. I was going to be good to them but I brought my gun just in case they weren't good to me. Phil approached the river rats as they were lifting Phil's net. He asked them what they were doing with his net. They pretended ignorance and said, oh, is that what this is? Here's what I'm gonna do, Robertson said. I'm gonna lift that net and whatever fish is in there, I'm gonna give to you. The river rats were shocked, but not too shocked to take the fish. They left Phil, but they kept looking back at him with pleased confusion. From that day on, they didn't try to steal anything from the Robertsons. I figured that this meant God was right all along, 
Robertson smiled. Who can you bless today, even if they don't deserve it? Do something for them in secret and see what God will do. Blessing your enemies is hard, but it leads to God-given joy. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.